just got in a book order of about a thousand dollars worth of books um, and so slowly they will be making their way onto the shelves in the library it'll be on the new books display um, either the cart or the shelves but I just wanted to give you some brief introductions to some of these new books so if you don't see them on the shelves let me know that you're interested and we'll get them put on hold so you can be on the wait list so um, the first one is the last eight and the last eight is a sci-fi book um, it's about aliens it's about a girl named Clover and she um, thinks that she's the only person that has survived the alien invasion but then she gets a mysterious transmission um, telling her to report to Area 51 um, and there she meets a whole bunch of other teenagers who have also survived but she starts to wonder what the deal is with these teenagers so that one is the last eight the next one these witches don't burn this one is um, kind of set in Salem, Massachusetts, where the original um, Salem witch trials took place in American history. Um, and the main character, she is a real witch. She has real powers, so there's a little bit of fantasy and magical um, abilities in this book. Um, but there are also LGBTQ characters um, and issues in the story too. Um, so that is These Witches Don't Burn. The next one, Let Me Hear a Rhyme. Let Me Hear a Rhyme is um, set in Brooklyn, 1998. Um, so it's kind of a historical fiction novel, if you want to call 1998 historical fiction. Um, but it's about um, these two people and their best friend was murdered, but their best friend had some really good m musical talents. And so they try and get his um, music to live on even after his death. So they try and um, make his music, produce his music so that he can kind of live on through his music. Right. Serafina and the Splintered Heart. Um, Serafina and the Black Cloak is on the Iowa Teen Award list this year and we have the sequel in the library already. This is book three and I have book four on the cart that's almost ready to go out but book three is just about ready here to go out on the shelves as well. So kind of a fantasy, horror, um, with a historical fiction setting, um, very suspenseful, lots of good. Of Fire and Stars. Of Fire and Stars is a fantasy novel uh, with LGBTQ characters. Um, so the girl um, in this kind of reminds me a little bit of Frozen. Um, she is supposed to be married off to a prince in another kingdom. So when they get married, their kingdoms will have a truce with each other. But she is experiencing um, some magical powers and magic is banned in her kingdom. Um, the only thing is it's the opposite of Frozen. She doesn't turn everything into ice. She has fire powers. Um, so of fire, I wish you all the best. Another new one. Um, this one is about a boy named Ben, but he considers himself non-binary, which means he doesn't consider himself a boy or a girl. He prefers the um, pronouns they, them. Um, so uh, Ben has anxiety as well. And when Ben comes out to their family um, and tells their family that uh, they are non-binary and tries to explain it to the family, um, Ben gets kicked out. And so Ben has to find a place to live because they are now homeless. All right, the next one is The Truth As Told by Mason Buttle. Um, this book, I put it in the read-alike list for the, uh, the Fault in Our Stars because this book um, deals a lot with grief. So Mason had a best friend and his friend was found dead in an orchard uh, that his family owns. And so he's grieving the loss of his best friend, but he also wants to find out what happened to him. So it's kind of a bit of a mystery. Um, Mason is also bullied a lot. He has a learning disorder, so he's bullied a lot for not being able to keep up in school. Uh, but he makes a new friend who's trying to help him solve the mystery of what happened to his friend that was found um, dead on his family's orchard. Echo North. Echo North is kind of a um, take on Beauty and the Beast. So there is a Norse mythology that kind of goes along with the Beauty and the Beast story, or if you know the story of Cupid and Psyche from Greek mythology. Um, but this kind of has a similar theme where a girl has to go live with a monster in order to free somebody that she loves. So a good fantasy read. Um, about 400 pages, you know, fantasy books can be a little bit long-winded, um, but had really good reviews. So this one, Wish on All the Stars. 
Wish on All the Stars is actually the second book. I don't quite have the first book ready to put out on shelves yet, but I'm going to go ahead and put this one out too. I think you can read them in any order. You don't have to read them in order. Um, but it's about a girl and her friends who are in this um, club. And in this book, they're trying to save the bookmobile in their town. Um, there's also a character named Carmen in the story whose mom is possibly facing deportation. Um, so kind of a lot of things going on in this book, just about um, girls and friendships and just kind of hanging out um, and kind of their little club that they um, that they made together. Queens of Geek. This one is about a, uh, the main character is a vlogger and an actress and she is debuting her first movie at Supacon. So if you like um, those uh, like Comic-Con um, fan type of get-togethers, um, conventions, that's where this one is set. Um, there are also some LGBTQ characters and themes in this one as well. So Queens of Geek. We Were Here by Matt De La Pena. Pena. Um, he is a really good author who writes a lot about Latino characters. Um, so this one, it's about Miguel and it says, when it happened, Miguel was sent to juvie. The judge gave him a year in a group home, said he had to write in a journal so some counselor could try to figure out how he thinks. The judge had no idea that he'd actually done Miguel a favor. Ever since it happened, Miguel's mom can't even look him in the eye. Any home besides his would be a better place to live. So just a book about trying to figure out what it is, what happened to Miguel, um, and kind of raises the question about, can you ever really run away from your problems? Whatever it is, can Miguel just run away from it? Or is he going to have to face it eventually? Snow in Love might be a little bit early in the year for this one. This one might be a little bit better in a couple of months when you can snuggle up by the fire. If you don't have a fireplace at home, turn on your Chromebook and uh, go to a YouTube fireplace screensaver and read this book. Um, but it's four short stories and the authors are Melissa De La Cruz. She is the author of Alex and Eliza. So she wrote one of the short stories. Um, Casey West, who writes a lot of very popular romances that we have in the library, um, wrote, a, wrote a short story. And then Nick Stone, who wrote Dear Martin, um, which is kind of a the hate you give read alike. Um, she also wrote a short story in here as well. Um, one of them is about Hanukkah. So there's a little bit of diversity in here too. If you are not a Christmas person, there's Hanukkah in here too. Um, but just stories uh, that are based around winter and Christmas and holiday theme. All right, Riverdale, get out of town. This is the um, second book in the Riverdale series. Um, these are books that are based on the TV show, but they are not stories that have happened in the TV show. Um, so this book, it says it's told from alternating points of view and it's set in the Riverdale universe, but it's an original story that's not seen on the show. Um, so it's about Betty, Veronica, and Jughead, and they all know that Archie is being framed but the evidence is stacked against him. So the gang comes up with a plan to try and prove his innocence. So that's Riverdale, get out. All right, sorry, not sorry. This one is about um, two girls. One is African-American, one is white, um, and they are just kind of struggling with their, to maintain their friendship. Their friendship is changing as they're growing older. Um, and then one of the girls also um, is diagnosed with diabetes. So she has some health, very serious health struggles. The last novel here um, is Marcus Vega doesn't speak Spanish. So Marcus Vega is six feet tall. He's 180 pounds and he's the owner of a premature mustache. And when you look like this and you're only in the eighth grade, you're both a threat and a target. So he gets in a school fight and he faces suspension. So Marcus's mom decides it's time for a change and they go to visit some family in Puerto Rico. Um, the only thing is, kind of two things actually, Marcus has never met any of these family members in Puerto Rico before. Um, and also his father ran out on them a long time ago, 10 years ago. And he knows that his dad is somewhere on this island. So when he gets a chance to be on the island of Puerto Rico, he decides this is his chance to try and run away and find his father. So Marcus Vega doesn't speak Spanish. And then we got a couple of new um, graphic novels in. This one is Middle School Misadventures. This one looks really cute. It's got some really cute, um, co very colorful graphics. If you have read New Kid, the new graphic novel that we got in last year, um, very similar to that, very similar art styles. Um, but this is about a kid who wants to avoid summer school, so he signs up for the school talent show. The only problem is he doesn't really have any talents. So how is he going to survive the school talent show and get away with not having to go to summer school? 
and then another new graphic novel. This one is The Hidden Witch. It is the sequel to The Witch Boy. Um, the third one comes out in November. So this one, once again, um, very colorful graphics. Um, one of my library helpers last year, she said that it was really, really good. She really enjoyed the first one and she suggested that I should get the sequel, um, which brings up a good point. If I am ever missing a sequel or the next book in a series and you know it's out, let me know. There's a lot of books in the library. I try to stay on top of sequels um, and new books and series, but sometimes they slip by me. So this was a good recommendation by my library helper last year. So those are some new books in the library. I hope you guys come check them out.